Hey guys, Gavin, and you know that test that you've been waiting for me to do, the Fuji test, the Worms 2 test? Run! It's here. It's, this is the video, you're watching it. Oh, the worm, the worms are coming. <laughs> now I do my annual Lightroom versus Capture One video, and I did that this year. I'll link it in the comments if you're here because you're trying to decide. And I've also started comparing Lightroom and Capture One with other apps like Luminar. Videos about that on the channel. Subscribe if you like this sort of thing. But there's a breakout video that I did in 2021 about worms on Fuji cameras because there's this thing where you go and you buy a Fuji camera and the faithful to both Fuji and Capture One insist that you will get better results if you use Capture One. And based generally on very anecdotal ev evidence, based on very vague evidence, a lot of new Fuji users are like, oh, I have to get Capture One if I'm gonna be a serious Fuji user. Once you buy onto that train, the confirmation bias kicks in and you don't really want to admit that maybe maybe you were wrong. Now I've done the 2023 comparison and Lightroom in almost every area is on top of Capture One, but wait, if you have a Fuji, Will you be dealing with worms? We're gonna compare the real world raw files. And you know what? I usually put the conclusion to these reviews up front. So I'll do that right now. There is no practical reason that you need Capture One. You will not get markedly better results in terms of noise and worms and details using Capture One over Lightroom. In fact, in some areas, you might get better results in Lightroom as we saw in my full Lightroom versus Capture One 2023 review. I've got a bunch of sample files from my own Fuji cameras. I even went over to our friends at DP Review and grabbed a couple files, one from the new X-T5 40 megapixel, which I don't have. And I even downloaded a file from the X-Pro1 so we could go all the way back to the X-Trans1. All my sample images I have taken and I've applied the same profile, including a Canon file here and a Sony file here. So we have kind of some baseline reference. My classic Chrome-like preset so that they're all processed consistently. And by doing a preset instead of a profile, even the older cameras that don't have a profile, even other brands, they're all being processed with the same settings, giving us the same look in both Lightroom and in Capture One, let's talk about what these worms are. So you can see these have already been processed with Classic Chrome, very light processing on these. Where you notice this the most is if you turn up sharpening or if you're at really high ISO. Now this is ISO 10,000. So this is a very high ISO file, my X100V. So this will be an X-Trans 4 sensor. Now, if you look, and let's go to 200%, this is overkill, but just so you can see, see that kind of wormy-like pattern that you get at very, very high ISOs? Now, I've turned the sharpening way too high here, and if you turn this down, it looks a lot more like noise. All the settings like sharpening, noise, grain, all those were left at default. And by the way, you can download some of my free presets like the Classic Negative. I'll put a link in the comments for my free Filmless pack if you wanna play with these yourself and be using some of these film profiles across any camera or any file. Okay, so let's zoom into one-to-one -one on this, not two-to-one, because two-to-one is not even really realistic. Here's our one-to-one. -one. You're welcome to crank this up to 4K at full screen if you really want to pixel peep with me. Now, let's look. Where you tend to see worms the most is in solid color areas, faces, uh, walls, things like that. I could come over and apply any number of presets for noise and detail from Filmist or from Silver or something like that, but I'm not going to do any of that. All of these settings are defaults. Capture One, Lightroom. Now I know what you're saying, they're right. What Capture One has done is they've cranked up their denoise settings so that at a glance to the untrained eye, it looks like they're really way ahead. The difference is Lightroom isn't applying any luminance denoise by default. So if we come in here and here's the Lightroom version and let's go down and you can see noise reductions at zero. That's why the Lightroom version is sharper than the Capture One version because the Capture One default noise reduction, if we go over here to refine and go to noise reduction is at 50. If we go to Lightroom and go to luminance noise reduction and turn it up to 50, everything instantly changes. I think Lightroom's a little more aggressive. So I'm actually gonna do more like 40 in equivalent to Capture One's 50. 
And we could then play with sharpening and things like that. If we really dig in, and let's zoom into about two to one now and look down here at the wall and at the rocks. While there's some noisiness, there's actually more worminess on the Capture One version in this file than there is on the Lightroom version. In fact, I would go so far as to say the Lightroom version looks a fair amount better. Now you might say at this point, since we've added the noise reduction, we'll now capture one sharper. We can come over here and turn sharpening up in Lightroom. And you notice, as I said, the higher the noise or the more you sharpen, the more the worms come out. I've noticed that at least in 2023, and I showed you this in my full review of Lightroom versus Capture One, there's some files that Lightroom seems really far ahead, particularly dark, high ISO images. Lightroom algorithms of noise seem to handle it better. I do want to give you one point of reference here, and that is with a Sony file, a 73 file taken on the beach. If we look at our model here, we can see even at ISO 3200 on the Sony, we still have what is not that different than worminess, both in Capture One and in Lightroom. Of course, at a glance, we say Capture One has less noise. Let's turn the noise reduction on in Lightroom, however, because again, off by default. 40 points of noise, and here we are. What I actually notice a consistent pattern of is that Lightroom actually has a cleaner noise algorithm. While you can get very aggressive with the noise reduction in Capture One and you can crank it up, it actually has more artifacts in my experience than I get in Lightroom, even when you crank it up. So when you crank Lightroom up a lot, it does get a little pasty, but you have a lot of control and there's actually less pixely artifact. But I want you to just see what I mean as we sharpen and turn these up. The noise on a full frame or other sensor file is also kind of wormy. And you can see if you zoom in on either one of these with noise reduction off, the Lightroom does look different. Honestly, it feels more film grainy to me, the Lightroom version. And I see a lot more random artifacts on the Capture One version, but maybe you prefer how Capture One renders. Remember, raw processors render files differently. The bottom line here is you have worms on other cameras too. Because Fuji is a smaller crop sensor and a different style of sensor using the X-Trans sensor style, a lot of the images we get from Fuji sensors may show that a little bit more. In Lightroom, we could also try like the enhanced details. I've seen people say, oh no, to get the equal result in Lightroom, I have to use enhanced details. It takes way more time. I'm not using any of that today. We're using the basic tools, default settings, and then trying to match those settings. This one, at ISO 640, a lot of dynamic range going on. Obviously, I would go in and I would use some of the AI tools. I would use presets. I would maybe even go to my natural HDR pack, but I want you to see kind of the real clean, straightforward view of this. The same file in Capture One, and let's bring this up to one-to-one. -to -one. How do they both look out of the gate? So this is Lightroom with this file. This is taken on an X100V, and here's Capture One with the same file. Obviously, we're seeing slightly different renditioning differences on these because they're different raw processors. Even though I process all these with the same preset, you are still gonna see very minor differences in Lightroom versus Capture One in the way it's handling them. Capture One version, Lightroom version. Now again, let's look on the motor here. The Capture One version is a little cleaner, right? Let's go to noise reduction, turn it up to 35 or 40, and there we go. Now they are virtually identical. I'm showing you these different images because I want you guys to see that I didn't just cherry pick one or two images. I've taken a lot of different images, different scenes, different ISOs from different cameras. This is actually an X-Pro1. So an original X-Trans file, I downloaded this from the sample files over at DP Review. Let's just go one-to-one -one on this and go one-to-one -one on this. Same thing right here. Little bit cleaner, even on this very old version of the file in Capture One, but as soon as you turn up the noise reduction, they're virtually identical. Lightroom, Capture One. Lightroom, Capture One, okay? Since we're looking at DP review files, just real quick, let's look at the 40 mixel, megapixel file from the new X-T5, because I've seen some comments also like, oh, but on the new 40 megapixel file, it's bad, okay? So here we go. Obviously, you tend to get a little more noise on a small sensor and a lot of, of megapixels. This is a big megapixel sensor, but it actually looks pretty good. Here is our Capture One version then in this right here with our default detail settings that are coming in on this file. And here is the Lightroom with the default detail settings. Again, very close. If anything, 
there's more artifacting and micro noise back here. This is what I'm actually looking at. It's not almost, it's not necessarily the quantity of the noise that I'm looking for. On most of my photos, I add grain to them to get a nice, consistent, smooth, film-like look. It's not a little bit of graininess that's bad, it's artifactiness. Now again, those are fine differences. And if you were to throw a little grain on that, it would not be an appreciable difference in a print, certainly not on the web. I'm not trying to say Capture One is now the bad processor. These both are processing these files just fine, just like they do Sony, Canon, Nikon, etc. Let's punch in on this one right here, which is a portrait from an X-T3. Now we are here in Capture One on this one, and here we are in Lightroom. And yes, the color and contrast actually is coming out a little bit different between Capture One and Lightroom, but let's focus on the noise details because the processing and how we want to do color and details and stuff is another matter. We're at one-to-one -one again, and if we look at Capture One versus Lightroom, again, look at the windshield, right? You can see maybe a little more noise, but it's also not as sharp. Same thing as all these. We turn up the noise reduction a little bit in Lightroom, and that's really all you got to do. Now, I could tinker and try and match these exactly with sharpening, radius, masking, luminance, color noise, all this stuff. But really, if you turn up about 20 to 35, you're going to end up with a file that looks almost identical in noise, regardless of the ISO, to Capture One. I think that's the main takeaway here, is that you really have to pixel peep so far to even find a difference. And when you start doing it, in my experience, Lightroom actually starts coming out a little bit of an edge this year. I didn't necessarily notice that in the test from 2021, but I think they've actually improved the noise algorithm. Let's take this photo taken from a balcony in Guanajuato, Mexico. And we have all the lights of the city. There's a lot going on. It's pretty late at night. Here's my Lightroom version. ISO 3200, and this was my Capture One version. And so you can see here, if I zoom in one-to-one, -one, you really kind of have, especially in the areas that are blurry, the bokeh areas, you start to see more of that. So let's focus on our face and this background area here and look at those differences. Again, right here. Capture One, of course, has applied its default noise reduction and it's working pretty good, but we see a little bit of artifacting Lightroom has left most of the noise alone here by default. Honestly, even if I didn't put noise reduction on, it'd be fine, but the noise reduction is also working well. I don't need to go crazy with it. I'm just gonna put about 35 on here. Okay, so our grain is at zero in Lightroom, and here is after our noise reduction, and our grain's also at zero in Capture One. Let's now turn up the grain just a little bit, just to kind of give a nice, consistent, organic texture, and I'm gonna put about the same amount of grain here in Lightroom. These are coming out a little bigger so I can play with size and roughness and all that. But there we go. So this here in Lightroom, without grain, with grain. And you can see it just kind of smooths over some of those artifacts and lines that we get. And when I zoom out, we have a very clean looking photograph here. And the same in Capture One. It's looking really good. And if I turn off the grain, you get a little bit more artifacting. And just like in Lightroom, you turn on the grain and you get a little bit of kind of that smoothing over. Neither one are substantially better. Now, I tend to use Lightroom more. I tend, I'm a little bit frustrated with some of the things Capture One has done this year, as I mentioned in my reviews, but I'm trying to be very objective, which is why I'm showing you all the side-by-sides. In my opinion, when it comes to worms and noise in general, including on Fuji files, regardless of the generation of Fuji camera you're using, Lightroom actually has a slight edge in general. And I've especially noticed these on darker and higher ISO images, like we looked at a little bit here. There's another example that I show in my Lightroom versus Capture One 2023 video that you might wanna check out. And the bottom line is that Lightroom is really killing it. The files look amazing out of Fuji cameras, and they also look amazing out of Fuji cameras on Capture One. You don't have to apologize for what software you use if you like it, but be objective and don't just fall on a bandwagon of being trendy and be like, oh, I shoot Fuji or I shoot this or I shoot that, therefore I also need to use that. Use the tool that is best 
for you. I could do more tests here, okay? But they're all coming out almost identical and this video is just getting longer and longer. I know this video was dedicated to noise and worms and that's what we did. I hope you enjoyed Worms 2 here for 2023. Let me know, do I even need to keep making these videos because I don't know if there's enough difference for it to matter that is in the question of worms. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give a subscribe, give a like, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I know I'll get a little bit of hate on these ones. I always do because there's some people that are just diehards for using Capture One with a Fuji camera or, or whatever, they're diehard. We're all diehards for something, I suppose. You guys let me know what you think in the comments and we'll see you next time. The worms are coming! Ah! Ah!